their best to stay cool while still tending to their customers. The manager of One Love Food Truck told me what it's like to not only be hot, but to be hotter in the food truck. There's about a 10 to 15 degree difference inside the truck just because of the fryers and then the grill in One Love. You have to try to keep, stay um, hydrated and honestly the customers make it a lot better. We have great customers and it really does help. And they're not the only ones working out in the heat. Construction and roof crews like Bone Dry Roofing tells us that their work doesn't stop either no matter how hot it gets. So we're planning out, you know, we're planning out jobs, we're planning out what we need to get. You know, we, we get stuff from the store, whether it's drinks, whether it's towels. Um, we have these pretty cool bandanas, uh, cooling towels that the company's provided for us. So we do a lot of things every single morning to make sure that the guys um, are out there in the heat, but they're also taken care of and they're, and they're properly prepared. Alexis tells us that she's glad that One Love is back open again because the staff couldn't work during the stay at home order. And Stephen Jones with Bone Dry says that his business was considered essential, so they got to work throughout the early days of the pandemic. It's imperative that when we're dealing with temperatures such as these, that we find a place that's calm, that we keep our body cool so that we all can stay collected. Tony Benton Jr., ABC 21 News. Well, the weather and the pandemic are credited for a record second quarter use of Fort Wayne's Greenway and the trails. Officials say because of several months of quarantine, folks have used the parks uh, to escape and enjoy the outdoors, get some fresh air, which is how the previous record was smashed this year. Uh, the 120 mile trail network saw nearly 250,000 users in just the past three months. During this pandemic, we have really seen how the community values our trails. Again, um, for peace and serenity, to reconnect with nature, to see other people out and about, um, to have a, a free venue to uh, recreate. And also, it's a huge transportation means of getting around our community, too. Well, the city uses 14 infrared trail cameras that track the usage. April saw the highest number of activity, uh, the highest amount of activity with nearly 88,000 visitors. The suspense is building. Will students be able to get back in their school buildings for the start of fall classes? While public school administrators work to try to make that happen, children are torn dealing with so many unknowns. Jeff Newmeyer is live outside Shawnee Middle School in Fort Wayne after talking today with some kids about what could lie ahead for them, Jeff. Yeah, Chris, of course, you know, we all know there's a strong desire to uh, be able to return to normal learning models with in-person instruction. And, and uh, plans are being formulated to try and make that a reality. But with COVID-19 cases spiking in many parts of the country, the path forward is a little unclear. We ventured down to the Boys and Girls Club of Fort Wayne this morning to meet up with some elementary, middle and high school students that are waiting like the rest of us to see what the start of school will look like in early August. You'll hear from 11-year-old Majine Callaghan in a moment. She's eager to go back to school, spend more time with her friends, and be able to be better focused on her studies, though she is nervous about the health risks. We also talked to a teenage boy who's ready to enter Southside High School as a freshman. He doesn't think kids should be rushed back into school buildings. I think I'd be okay staying home because I don't want to put anybody's life at risk. With us going back to school, like teachers, administration, custodians, stuff like that, I want them to have to help us learn. We can go home, teach ourselves. Yeah, it's really hard. Like, you don't know what, what you're supposed to do, and it's so confusing because when you're at school, a teacher's there to, to, to like, explain it to you. They're ready to go back to school, but they have a lot of worries about just catching COVID, and they're worried. Some of them are worried about maybe getting teachers sick or the bus driver sick. There's just a lot of unknown. Now, as you heard, students and their parents are anxious about getting sick and making others sick. Majine Callaghan, who spoke before, told me she doesn't know how she could stand to wear a mask at school all day. That She doesn't think she could breathe right. The American Academy of Pediatrics is pushing for students to be physically present in classrooms rather than at home with remote learning. The organization claims there's ample evidence to show that the benefits of in-person uh, learning, academic, mental, and physical, uh, really would overcome the risks associated with uh, the coronavirus. Uh, but can in-person learning uh, with social distancing uh, practices all a part of it. Uh, can that be practically put in force without turning the virus loose in a big way? Brian and Krista, really, we don't have some of those answers yet, and we wait 
here in the next month or so, I guess we're going to have to have some of those answers. Yeah, but some perspective and some wise words from those students today. Jeff, thank you. To an ABC 21 follow-up now, the group Faith in Indiana publicly celebrated the release of an undocumented immigrant from federal detention. ABC 21's Corinne Rose joins us now with continuing coverage of the controversial case, Corinne. That's right, Brian. The group Faith in Indiana has mobilized hundreds of people to call to petition for Jorge Oliva's release. And today, they rejoiced that their efforts have worked so far. The 26-year-old Oliva thanked his supporters. He's now free from a federal immigration and customs enforcement detention facility after having been behind bars for three weeks. Oliva's mother brought him to Fort Wayne from Mexico when he was six, and he's lived here as an undocumented immigrant ever since. Already on ICE's radar for previous misdemeanor offenses, agents took him into custody after Fort Wayne police arrested him at Black Lives Matter protests. He says even though he knew he risked being arrested there, he feels so strongly in the cause that he has no regrets. I'm a sacrificial pawn. Uh, if I have to use my case in order to get people strength and courage to speak up, I'll do it all over again. I'm still going to do it. It means a lot that people of faith were able to achieve one tangible change in a family's life in this city. Oliva says he will die if he's ultimately deported to Mexico because living in the United States is all he's ever really known. Oliva has a deportation hearing in Chicago in August. Until then, he says he'll be back out with protesters for the Black Lives Matter movement. The story is not over, Brian. It is not, Corinne. Thank you. A happening this weekend, the first in a series of neighborhood walks in the 5th District, led by City Councilman Jeff Paddock. And the program isn't new for Paddock or the city. Typically, elected leaders and others with the city will host these kinds of walks, trying to get a sense of what the neighbors want. But the one plan for this Saturday, Paddock says, is taking on a serious topic there, an increase in crime and drug use. We're not sure exactly the extent, but I've been told by constituents that the Well Street area, and particularly the Well Street Park area, Wells and Third Street, have been overcome in recent weeks with um, drug addicts and uh, uh, individuals that have been harassing uh, citizens and uh, residents, business owners along this way. The neighborhood walk will begin at the Well Street Park at 1030 this Saturday morning. In this time of social distancing and isolation, many of us are reminded the importance of family. Some families don't look the same. Others may not be physically together. For her part, an artist in Marion is using her talents to create portraits for all families. Stroke after careful stroke. It's 18 million layers. Courtney Harvey applies paint to paper. It's very complex. I just had no idea. She'll spend a month or so on this project, sneaking in work between her full-time job and raising a family. Oh, yeah. I'm one of those crazy people where I need to be doing something all the time. An artist by hobby, Courtney started her business by accident. When my daughter was coming, I started painting actually like Disney princesses and different characters to put up in her room, watercolors. And I posted a picture on Facebook, oh, homesick, you know, look at these fun paintings I did. And people started asking me how much they were. Courtney's specialty and what turned into truly meaningful work is the way in which she paints, or rather doesn't paint, faces. At first, using the technique on characters and then applying it to family portraits. Others saw the paintings and ideas for their use snowballed. It, there just came about so many different ways that you could touch people's lives.